Principles of Anatomy and Physiology by me. Okay, sir. I will want. Okay, so the skeletal system. The skeletal system is simply a hard structure of an animal or human providing support, framing for the body. Um, the skeletal system consists of bones associated with cast cartilage, tendons, ligaments and joints which protect and support the body. So what that basically is saying is that um, all of us need the skeletal system um, to provide stability and so that we stay upright and straight. So, so I found this very interesting. Um, go on, Rua. Found, you found it? Yes, that's it. Um, this here is obviously a picture of the skeletal system um, listed with all the parts and yeah. Um, there is um, the rib cage, the sternum, and that is um, a vital part of the skeletal system because it protects our vital organs. The vertebral column. The role of the vertebral column is to provide protein of the spinal cord. Um, it also provides stiffening for the body at att attachment for the pel um, pelvic and pectoral guidelines. Um, there's also other muscles included. Specifically in humans, um, there is also another function to trans transmit body weight in um, walking and standing. The vertebral column is also flexible and extends from the neck to the tail, made from a series of bones called vertebrae. Um, it's, it can also be referred to as the spinal column, the backbone, or spine for the people who find it hard to use complicated words. Um, what that basically is saying is um, the vertebrae column is made of a variety of vertebrae with tendons in the middle of them. So, um, yeah, just provides support for the back. Okay. Um, this is a diagram of the vertebrae column. Um, these are the cervical curves. Um, there's the cervical vertebrae, the field kick vertebrae, the lumbar vertebrae, the sacrum, and the cyclobial vertebrae. So I don't, I don't understand that one. I'm basically listing the different sections of the vertebrae, listening from here down to the tail. I uh, was the last one I couldn't hear from the The cyclobial vertebrae. All right. The actual skeleton. The actual skeleton is a network of bones located in the central axis of the organism. So obviously, um, the sections of the bones are separated into two different sections. What is? Um, I'm going to it. Um, in humans, it consists of eighty bones separated into into six different parts. So here is an example of the actual skeleton, um, which involves the cranium. Um, spinal cord and um, the rib cage so that's the like, central part of the skeleton. Yes, Paul. So you see when you're a baby, yeah? Yeah. Um, um, I heard that you have more bones. I just wanted you to address that, sir. Oh, when you're a baby? Yeah. Um, no, you don't have... You have the same number of bones, it's just that they grow, isn't it? Yeah? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. The appendicular skeleton, um, which is the other part. Um, the appendicular skeleton is located in the lower limbs um, of the actual skeleton and also the upper limbs. In humans, it consists of 120 bones. This um, is a diagram of the appendicular skeleton. As you can see, um, it consists of your limbs, um, including um, the femur, um, the, the humerus, and um, your carpals and tarsals, and yeah, it's just your limbs. So anything apart from the actual skeleton, see it there, clearly. Sorry. Yeah. Um, different types of bones. Sorry, sorry. Can anyone list the different types of bones? Go on, one. Long bones. Yeah. Short bones. Yeah. Long yeah. bones and sesame bones. Or down cross bones. Yeah. 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 So Flat bones. You already said. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, you said already. Yeah, well done. Good boy. Long bones. Uh, long bones are found in the body, such as the femur and the humerus. Um, it can also be the smallest part of the bones, e.g., metacarpals and metatarsals and the 
fly angelis. So what what that basically is stating is that the rules for long bones is that they're longer than they are wider. So it can be the longest part of your bones or they can be the smallest part part so of your bones as long as they follow the bone rules. So what's the fly angelis? The fly angelis, um, I've got a diagram for you, it's gonna be there. So I wanted you to show us on your body because it would um it would be more like more help for us. Right, it's there. It's where? Yeah. There. Where, 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 where? I just showed it to you. You're pointing to the floor, sir. We want to know the specific um, part. Because you could be pointing to your metatarsals, you never know. It's there. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, um, this, is, <laughs> this is because long bones are defined as having a body with, with, which is longer than it is wide, as I've already stated. So that's the law for the long bones. If you find a bone which is like that, um, you know it's a long bone. Don't matter how big or small it is. Um, um, oh yeah, um, long bones have growth plates on each end. So, um, like the femur, they have um, growth plates on each end. So that's how that's how you can identify a long bone. So I'll show you. Oh oh, and a, a peef, a peef is, is as I said, it's a growth plate. It's the end of oh. bones. Yeah, so that. You have one on each end of your femur. Yeah? Um, they have an outer, um, a hard outer surface and a spongy, marrow like inner surface. Um, they also have cartilage um, for proteins on the tips of the epithesis or growth base. So, this is an example. <laughs> this is an example of a long bone. Um, you can see it has the structure, the epithesis, and which is at the, t at, the at the ends of each at the ends of the bones, and that is the middle part of the bone. I know it's a bit blurry, but you guys can make it out. Yeah. Yeah, just about so. Short bones. Um, they are defined as being wide as they are long. So, yeah. Um, provide support and stability with li very little movement, um, such as the carpals. Okay. Um, yeah, carpals, tar um, tartals, the foot and the wrist. Um, consist of a thin layer of compact, um, hard outer bone with a lot of bone marrow on the inside, so like the long bones. Um, so this is an example, um, the metacarpals around here and they have a spongy inner side and compact bone around the outside. So yeah. Flat bones. Flat bones are the easiest one. Um, they're strong flat plates providing protection to the body's vital organs. Um, base for muscular atta uh, attachment. Um, the sternum, breastbone, cranium, the skull and this is the scientific word for the hip bone scapula and the shoulder blade, they're examples of flat bones. Um, in adults, a very high number of red blood cells are found in flat bones, so as you can see, the flat bones are, are vital to the body as they help produce blood cells, which help maintain um, homeostasis, which is maintaining uh, a healthy, constant environment. <sighs> they're very compact bones to provide strength and protein, also within the body, and the scapula is an example of um, a flat bone, which is here. Okay. Irregular bones. Um, bones do not fall um, in, any, in any other, uh, bones which do not fall in any other category because um, they're not um, in uniform with any of the other bone groups. Um, as their structure cannot be, their, struct their structures do not match the other structures. Um, yeah, as it says, random, non-uniform shape. Um, the vertebrae, um, sacrum, and man mandible, which is the lower jaw, they're examples of the irregular bones. Um, they mainly consist of cancerous bones um, with a thin outer layer of compact bone. So, a vertebrae from the spinal cord um, is an example of this. As you can see, it has a very weird alien-like shape, so um, can't really put it in any other category. Uh, 
sesamoid bones, um, mainly short or irregular bones found with tendons embedded into them, um, the patella which sits in the quadriceps and tendon, a good example, just around here, yeah? um, usually found in a tendon where it passes over a joint which serves to protect the tendon. So here's a good example of a sesamoid bones, as you can see, um, the patella um, with embedded tendons. So yeah, you can actually see that she wants a sesamoid bone. And um, functions of bones, so like all the bones, they may, they may look like just simple and hard things, but they have specific functions. So some of the functions are, um, is to provide support and stability to the body, allowing it to stay upright and balanced while moving. So without the bones, obviously you wouldn't be upright, um, you wouldn't be able to move properly. So the bones, you need the bones to just provide stability. So here I am in a good example. Um, they also provide protection for vital organs, e.g. the rib cage and the sternum, protecting the cardiac muscles and heart and also the lungs. Um, so you can also see the liver, um, kidneys and also the stomach at, at death. Uh, so as you can see, it helps protect your vital organs. Uh, without that, if you got punched um, right there, you will obviously die. So it don't matter how hench you are, yeah? if you haven't got that, then you're going to die. So, the skeletal system also stores minerals, e.g. calcium, to help maintain the body's strength and structure. By doing this, um, the bone maintains its properties and functions properly. As um, we all know, bones um, contain calcium, and also you see them in like milk adverts and yogurt adverts. Um, you need calcium within your body, and they help make your bones stronger. So if the bones um, help reduce their own calcium, they'll, be, they'll, they'll become stronger so by themselves. So, yeah. Bones are very good. Um, the skeletal system also has a function of attachment for skeletal muscles as bones, um, which allow movement, have embedded tendons which connect to the muscles, which leads to movement. So you can see the bones also help with movement. So without the bones, you wouldn't be able to move properly, but they have tendons attached to them, which attach to the muscles to help create that movement. Um, bones also produce blood cells which are, which are vital for carrying substances around the body, e.g. oxygen and carbon dioxide. Red blood cells are created in the heads of long bones, as we already stated, back then. So. Oh, and um, the red blood cells, as we know, are created in the flat bones as well. So, yeah. So, I'm going to move on to joints now. So, can anybody, can anybody tell me the different types of joints? Gone, hinge. Yeah, no, no, no. Like the three main groups. Three main groups? Yeah. Ball and socket. <laughs> Gone. Cyanodule. Shut up. Um, no, it's there already. Cyanodule is one of them. Okay, we're going to go through them, yeah. So, obviously, your memories need a recap. Cyanodule joints. Cyanodule so, um, recap of this, sir. Cyanodule fixed. And um, the partially movable. So, yeah. Synovial joints, um, see, there's a grammatical error synovial and joint synovial joints. So, <laughs> like, do get it. None of you clock that. Um, are the most freely movable joints in the human body. Um, synovial fluid between, actually, let me just carry on so you can see the image and I can talk you through it. So, um, here is an example of a synovial joint. Um, as you can see, the um, heads of the bones have, um, who remembers what the heads are called? The heads of the, of the bone. No? Um, go on, what's called? The heads? Yeah, of the bone. What do you mean the heads? Like the femur, they have tips on them. Or oh, the heads of the bone? Yeah, the long bone. Oh, that's good. Okay, I'll remind you of that later. Anyways. Um, Can you mind us now, please? So that I just need to explain this. They have. Um, what is it, though, sir? I'm curious now. <laughs> Anyways. So, sir? You keep escaping my question. That's not what you Anyways, the tips have cartilage on them, and then within the cartilage, there's synovial cavity, or in other words, synovial fluid. And this synovial fluid um, acts like a lubricant inside oh. the synovial trains, and that 
um, stops frictions and the bones rubbing against each other, so that helps with movement. Um, here is a bursa, um, which kind of like separates the muscles and everything else from the compact synovial fluid. So um, that also helps with movement. The bursa is also yeah, it's also filled with synovial fluid. Um, yeah, let me just read that out. Synovial fluid between cartilage prevents friction. The bursa is also fit, um, filled with synovial fluid. Joint capsules act like a seal to joint spaces, um, which provide extra strength. So where's the joint capsules? Um, the joint capsules are here. So these, they provide extra strength within the bone. Um, yeah, some examples are ellipsoid joints, ball and socket, hinge joints, and pivot joints. So, yeah. Slightly movable joints. Um, slightly movable joints have cushions of cartilage, um, articular cartilage in between the bones. Joints are limited, joints are limited in movements as cartilage stops the bones from moving too far. An example of this um, type of joint is between the vertebrae column. Um, saddle joints are a type of slightly movable joint. So as you can see, um, um, this is a, these are like three vertebrae from the vertebrae column and um, here is the articular cartilage. Because of that articular cartilage, um, the bone um, is only slightly movable, so it can only move to like, a certain extent. So yeah. Good example right there. Uh, fixed joints. Bones are bonded together by tougher fibre tissues and can also be called fibrous joints. So it's a new word for you. Um, non, they have none or very little movement. Um, the cranium um, is a good example because um, whose cranium moves here? Put your hands up. Yeah. So here's a picture of a cranium, as you can see it has very little movement. Yeah. Obviously, as your baby, when you're a baby, cranium uh, does move slightly, yeah, but as you grow older, um, it gets harder and tougher and stiffens as you get older because your body produces calcium, making your body stronger and yeah. Okay, um, here um, are the names of the different types of joints, which I was going to ask you, but it's obviously already there. The information of the types of joints and what they're like is already listed, so you guys can have a quick read. And there's good examples in schools. So I'm just going to go through one, like um, the pivot joints. Um, allows rotation when in use, um, pronation and supination takes place. Um, and this, an example of this is Serena Williams going for a backhand in tennis in the grandstand, so yeah. I've got a video for you guys um, for the first part of my lesson. Um, for any of you who didn't understand any of my work. Um, okay. So you could have had it, so it would have been easier. Yeah, I'll do that next time. Thank you for watching. No problem, sir. So this is simplified version of everything I just talked. So can you skip that? You, you can skip it, just press on the birds. Sir. Everyone has a good understanding.
understanding of what I've been doing from that video. So, yeah, um, that doesn't really simplify everything you thought of, sir. It does simplify, it just shows that the bones are joined together, so that's the basis I want everyone to understand oh. today. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right, yeah, I understand, sir. Great stuff. <laughs> Could have just gone to begin with this slide, but there we go, that's it. So long. Okay, part two of my presentation, we're going to move on to muscles. Okay. This is me and all my muscles and um, all the muscles within the body so I'll have a quick look at that okay movement so we're going to start on agonist and antagonistic pairs um, the, okay what two properties do muscles have actually they're four properties Okay, like the main properties of muscles. Support. They contract and they relax. Um, antagonistic pairs work together to create movement um, by contracting and relaxing using their two properties. Um, difference uh, between agonist and an antagonist is that the agonist creates the act and the antagonist reacts opposing that act. Uh, biceps and triceps work together to lift up um, dumbbells. So, like, if you're at a gym and you're doing dumbbells, um, the triceps, um, they're the agonist as they create the action by pulling your muscles up and um, they um, contract and the antagonist is your biceps at the back and they relax, yeah? So, they work um, opposing each other but they work well. So like a good a good thing of this is that when you're working out yeah, you're working out two muscles at the same time, so like the effects are much quicker and yeah. So um, another examples are the pecto um, the pectorials and the latissimus dorsi. Um, one part work without the other, as I've already stated, and yeah. Uh, fixed haters. Um, the main role of, of a fixator muscle acts as a stabilizer for your body while the other parts move. Um, it does this by increasing the tension within the muscle. So, um, rule one said, if you're holding the ball outwards like that, um, obviously you've got, um, you've got more weight than the ball itself. Your, your body adds weight. So, um, by creating this tension, um, you can hold the ball for longer because all your muscles flex. Um, they, they allow generating movement and allowing people to stay balanced while moving as well. Um, the purpose is to maintain a maximum stability so other muscles work um, at their optimum. Um, fixed muscles also help fix sta um, stabilizing joints. Um, synergist. Syn synergist muscles work together with other muscles to create movement. Um, synergist muscles um, are used for most simple and most common movements around the body, such as gripping something or even sitting down and standing up. Um, synergist muscles are alike to fixators as they to stabilize muscles and movement to keep the body even and balanced. Types of contractions. Um, concentric um, contractions are those which cause the muscle to shorten um, as it contracts. An example is bending the elbow um, from straight to fully flexed, causing the um, concentric contractions of the biceps, um, brachial muscles. Um, yeah, um, concentric contractions are the most common types of muscle contractions and occur freely in daily sporting activities. 
um, an example of doing curls. Eccentric contractions are the opposite of um, concentric and occur when muscle lengthens as it contracts. This is less common and usually involves the um, control of de declaration of movements um, being in initiated by eccentric muscle agonists. Um, um, as of kinetic contraction changes length during contractions while, uh, where they differ in that as of kinetic contractions produce movements of a constant um, constant speed. To measure this, a special piece of equipment known as isoconnectic diameter is required. That's what it said. Dyn dyn dyno dyno meter. Jimmy, dyno dyno meter. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Pascal. Isometric contractions occur when there is no changes in length of um, the contracting muscle. This occurs when carrying an object in front of you. As the weight of the object is pulling you, is pulling your arms down by, um, but not your muscles um, are contracting to hold the object at the same level. Um, now we're going to move on to the the. What was it to say? Um, it's going to be like reflexes. So. So muscle fibers. Yeah, muscle fibers. Thank you. Muscle fibers. There's three types of mu uh, muscle fibers. No one list them. Obviously, there's one there. So don't say that one. Type 1, type 2A, and type 2B. Um, type 1 are slow twitch fibers. Um, they have a red colouring as there is um, a high concentration of myoglobin and oxygen. The higher the concentration, the redder the fibre cells get. Uh, myoglobin is a special protein that stores and carries oxygen in the, muscles, in the muscle cells to keep the muscles working. So, obviously, respiration um, is examples of how the muscles work. Um, because they are also fatigued, um, types of type 1 um, fibers are commonly found in the back or neck. Um, Usain Bolt um, compared to Mo Farrell, um, as their slow twitch fibers, um, Mo Farrell is more likely to have um, these fibers as um, he does long distance running. So. Um, Type 1 um, slow twitch fibers are for more um, endurance um, sports like marathons and yeah. Type 2A, they're fast twitch fibers, um, usually found in animals, um, a mixture of type 1 and type 2. Um, they contain a large amount of myoglobin, hence the reason, hence they're rich in red color like type 1. So they're usually found in animals. Um, an example is the cheetah. So um, they may use um, these types of fast twitch fibers to help catch its prey. So, um, the last one is type 2 B. They're fast twitch fibers, low amounts of um, myoglobin, meaning that the fibers are, very, are either very pale or white in color as there is less oxygen available. This means um, there will be a short burst of power. So uh, Usain Bolt versus Mo Farah this again. Um, Usain Bolt obviously um, has type 2 twitch fibers because um, he's the reflexes for when he hears that gunshot just needs to go quick. So um, you can see him actually there. So it's moving really fast. And um, type 2 can also be inherited. So um, must have got the inheritance. So you can see normally Jamaica. Um, always like in the top, coming up in the top threes and stuff like that, and relays and stuff. So, I've got a video for you guys to watch to end this.